The herringbone pattern that is so consistent elsewhere in the cloth looked misaligned. Our theory is that there is a mixture of 16th century cloth and 1st century cloth and the data that we need on the cloth matches that theory. Benford and Marino believe that the carbon date was wrong because the section chosen for the samples was contaminated with later material. They believe the original linen was repaired with completely different cotton thread in the 16th century. When you do this type of wee weaving, um, you're not just stitching two pieces of material together. And that would give you all of one and all of the other. It's more like this. The ends are unraveled in the main cloth. The ends are unraveled in the patch. They are spliced together and the threads are connected and interwoven. So you see literally an interweaving such that you have old and new on both sides of the equation. Well, I'm skeptical when I'm listening to this, but they had taken photographs that were available of the samples taken for the carbon dating, and they had submitted these to several textile experts who didn't know they were looking at a photograph from the shroud, and each of these textile experts, independent of each other, said, you know, this looks rewoven. The samples taken for radiocarbon dating were cut from one corner of the shroud, adjacent to a seam it was effectively an area that was damaged by someone cutting a piece out of it, possibly to sell as relic, so it needed to be repaired. Benford and Marino argued that because the carbon dating sample contained material from both the 16th and 1st centuries, the result was in between the two. I got a call from Ray. And he goes, what the hell is this? <laughs> this is nonsense. I can prove these people wrong in five minutes. And I said, well, Ray, go for it. He was the gunfighter. He was one of those guys that if he didn't like what you were saying, he'd have pulled out his six-shooter and fired off six before he had a chance to take a breath. He was not very tolerant, especially of people doing bad science. Rogers was in a unique position to confirm if the linen shroud contained later cotton repairs. Ray had in his possession, from 1978, the tape samples lifted from the surface of the shroud. But remember, those were not big fibers. Those were fibrils taken from the surface. He also had some samples that were taken from the shroud by Professor Reyes, who took samples in 1973 from a corner that was immediately adjacent to the area taken for carbon dating. But Ray Rogers was in a race against time. He was fighting a losing battle with cancer, and he knew his end was near. His old friend Barry Schwartz was determined that Rogers should have the chance to speak from beyond the grave. I am Ray Rogers, Raymond N. Rogers, and I've been working on the Shroud since 1977. He filmed a detailed interview with Rogers so that the dying scientist could put on the record exactly what he found. So I read their paper and I thought, I've got the samples that can shoot that full of holes. So I got out the Ross samples and I got out the, uh, the shroud samples and I went to work again. A couple hours later he calls me and he goes, boy, he says, I can't believe it. He says, they were right. There's cotton here. He says, there's no cotton in the rest of the shroud, but there's cotton interwoven here. They must be right. No one was more shocked than Rogers. His observations seemed to confirm Benford and Marino's theory. The original linen shroud contained additional cotton threads. To confirm this, he needed to examine the threads that were carbon dated. Until I could get a sample from the real radiocarbon cloth, a documented sample, you know, I couldn't prove anything. The carbon dating process destroyed the sample, but all the labs involved in the 1988 test kept parts of their sample in reserve. 
The authentic radiocarbon sample that I got, these segments of yarn were cut from the middle of the radiocarbon sample, so there was no question about them. And when I looked at these samples from the radiocarbon area, there's no problem at all finding cotton in them. Rogers was now convinced that Benford and Marino were right. And he found other evidence they had missed. He knew from his own tests in 1978 that the shroud was free of artificial dyes and pigments. And yet, when he looked at surviving threads from the carbon dating samples, that's exactly what he found. You've got photomicrographs that demonstrate this very clearly. The cotton fibers from the radiocarbon sample are fairly heavily coated with the gum dye mordant, and some of the linen fibers don't show any of that at all. They look just as slick as anything, and it didn't stick to them. He believed the dye was used to make the cotton repair invisible to the naked eye. If you happen to hit a place where a yarn segment from the original shroud was spliced into the new uh, reweave part, the splice very definitely shows the new yarn that was being put in and dyed to match. The only thing in the shroud that was dyed or stained was this uh, radiocarbon area. So my hypothesis at the moment is that this was done on purpose to fool your eye. This was further evidence that the shroud was repaired with cotton in exactly the area where the carbon dating sample was taken. And when we went back and looked at the ultraviolet photographs, here is this area that's significantly darker. It doesn't fluoresce as much. And it's just this area that, uh, around the raw sample and where the radiocarbon sample was cut. And if they had looked at any of the photographs that we had and studied the information we had as of 1978, they would have known that that was the worst possible place they could have taken a sample. My conclusion is that that area was manipulated. It was done by somebody with great skill and different materials than were used to make the shroud. Here's the whole crux of it. Linen is very difficult to dye, and it ages as time goes on, so it's colored. So in order to match a reweaving with the original color, you have to use cotton, and you dye the cotton. In 2005, just five weeks before losing his battle with cancer, Rogers prepared to publish his last academic paper. He wasn't casting doubt on the science of carbon dating, but the selection of a contaminated sample from the damaged corner of the shroud. In his opinion, the carbon dating tests didn't reveal its true age. But one fateful decision was about to threaten Ray Rogers' last hope of carrying out a new carbon dating test. The scientific mainstream thought they'd laid the mystery of the Turin Shroud to rest. It was a fake, dated between 1260 and 1390. But scientist Ray Rogers had found new evidence suggesting the carbon dating sample was contaminated. I'm coming to the conclusion that it has a very good chance of being the piece of cloth that was used to bury the historic Jesus. He writes a paper that's accepted for publication in Thermochemica Acta, January of 2005. It was a race uh, for him because he knew he was dying. He wanted to know, is this corner of the shroud of the same composition, whether it was flax or linen or cotton? If it was cotton, it's not the same as the main shroud cloth, which is linen. Rogers would never live to discover the answer. He lost his long battle with cancer on the 8th of March, 2005. He was 78 years old. After Ray's death, Bob Villarreal was determined to honor his promise. 
he passed the fibres to a specialist. And something remarkable happened. I received a call from him and he said, the thread that I was going to analyse broke into two pieces. Is God going to be mad at me? <laughs> Just as Rogers suspected, the threads appeared to be two pieces of cotton and linen woven together. In 2008, the findings were announced to the world. They supported the theory that the carbon dating sample was poorly chosen, as Rogers suggested in his final interview. They come in and they snip, 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 snip in secret and take the worst possible sample they could. The people who certified the sample are still trying to convince everybody that everybody else is wrong, they're right, those were perfectly valid samples.